Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another brand new video. Now, I really wanted to talk about this topic today because it's a highly debated topic and it's a, probably a decision that we are all making into our 2024, right? Venom Nightmare is around the corner, obviously, that's coming out in February. And there's two powerful decks, which is going to be the new Rescue Ace deck with a bunch of new uh, support cards and obviously the new Fire King deck including the same support cards, honestly. So, honestly, with these two decks both being Tier 1 and arguably, you know, either or could be the best deck, which one should you invest your money in? Which one is actually better when that time comes, right? So, in this video, we're going to be breaking down all these different type of talking points and talking about why, uh, comparing each thing by their pros and cons, and I'm going to separate them into four different categories. And now, I'll have all the timestamps for you guys directly on your screen in front of you because there's going to be a lot of talking points about every single decision and every single uh, category i want to dive uh, in depth into them and talk about them you know pretty intensively so i do think that you know it could get a little bit messy if i just ramble on on and on so i did separate them and you guys can skip to each any portion of the video you guys want and you guys can hear my uh discussion on how i valued uh each point right so go ahead and skip to any categories you guys want or you guys can sit back and watch the entire uh speech by itself right and if you guys are just you know just want a clear-cut answer then go ahead and skip to the end i'll have that option uh for you guys as well and um you know but uh, i would like that you guys stick around and actually hear some explanations because it could not make sense if uh you know you guys just see the answer because uh, once you guys see the answer you guys are probably going to wonder why i picked that answer and you'd have to come back and watch the video anyways right so let's go ahead and uh dive into uh the first point Okay, guys, so for the first portion of this video, I want to go over the hand traps that each and every deck beats, right? So let's go ahead and talk about some of the more popular hand traps, and I broke it down into five different hand traps I'll talk about right now, right? And it's, it's going to be Ash Blossom, Valor, Imperm, Nibiru, and Joel Knockbird, and I think these are going to be the popular ones in the main deck and in the side deck, so let's talk about which deck can actually play through these cards a lot better than the other one, right? Let's go ahead and start off with Ash Blossom. I think both decks are pretty strong into Ash Blossom, if I'm being realistic. Each deck has their own ways to play through this card, and honestly, this card is might be like a B-tier card going to the upcoming format, because this card essentially makes it so that Promethean Princess is a Link 2 and not a Link 3. Shoutouts to Hida. Um, but uh, I don't think Ash Blossom is a card that we could even compare it to because, you know, obviously if you Ash Blossom pretty much anything like Prosperity, Emergency, Wanted Poster, Hydrant, if they have any form of extender, they're going to continue. And if we go over here in terms of our Fire King deck, as we can see in this example deck list, same thing, right? If you use Ash Blossom on the Snake Eyes Ash, they could have Wanted Seeker, they could have Prosperity, they could have... Um, uh, one of the fire king cards like ponix and or fire king island sanctuary you know more cards to keep extending through their plays and including bonfire which uh, i completely forgot in this deck so let's go ahead and put that in there as well right so we can go ahead and you know use bonfire use um wanted poster and use any of the cards uh like that as well um to keep going right so i do think in terms of the amount of extenders they both have an equal amount i don't think any of them have more than the other every deck both of these decks can play prosperity both of these decks can play bonfire and both of these decks can play um uh prosperity like i said earlier right i, I think i repeated it twice could be brain lagging right but uh point i'm trying to make is they're both pretty resilient to ash blossom because they both have equal amount of extenders now let's go ahead and talk about the effect negation cards such as effect veiler and infinite impermanence now i do think both decks have a very strong job of playing through both first of all the rest of ace deck I don't think Valor and Imperm are even playable into the next format, simply because not only do they have so many extenders, but one, you're going to be losing to the new combo that they're going to be doing, which is making SP Little Knight unturn with uh, turbulence on the field right now this is an old combo that they did back then but obviously the way you play around it is to use impermanence on the summon of turbulence and not the effect so you play around the sp little knight from chaining its effect however with the new promethean princess that's coming out uh, that just doesn't matter anymore because for some reason promethean princess when it reborns a monster using its effect the effect is not negated so if they threaten sp little knight with turbulence and you do imperm the summon they'll just link both of them together into the promethean princess bring back the turbulence and do the exact same same thing right on top of that rescue ace has so many ways to play their effect negations in terms of just emergency being a quick play uh, spell card that just beats all those um, hand traps 
and while now this does sound great and might put rescue race over the edge we can't forget that fire king also has high avatar kieran which is basically a built-in shavara for the entire deck while also being an extender for the deck which is absolutely insane now, on top of that we also have cards such as one and seeker and bonfire to play through uh, our hand traps on snake eyes ash right because ash is pretty much getting populous but populous is searchable through one and seeker and bonfire both cards so it's essentially the same thing i do think both of these decks are pretty much highly resilient through valor and imperm uh, so in this category they are the same right now let's go ahead and move on to another card draw our uh, draw lockboard and the bureau right so these are probably the game changers i think now if we're talking about Ash Blossom, Baylor, and Imperm, both decks are on the, the, the same playing field on the resilience of playing through these certain cards. Now, Nibiru, I do think, is a little bit better into the re into the Fire King deck. So Fire King loses a little bit harder to Nibiru because the new builds aren't really focusing on using Arvada and they're mo more focusing on trying to build that board to making uh, their end goal as strong as possible. And Super Poly definitely, or not Super Poly, Nibiru punishes that pretty heavily. Now, I do think in the Rescue Ace deck, it does the exact same thing it punishes the board however typically by the time you're able to use nibiru they have already have to resolve the set four effect off the rescue ace cards and that makes it so that at least if you get nibiru you're still ending with set four cards so you're not really losing in that card advantage dynamic i'm not saying nibiru is a bad card against rescue ace i'm just saying that like at least you get some value there before the impact of nibiru unlike fire king when you do get nibiru it's pretty much a pass with you know you're not setting four cards off that uh so you know it's a little bit more prone so i do think in terms of what that can play through uh, more hand traps with nibiru rescue ace does have that department b right now let's move on to Droll and Lockbird. Now I do think Droll and Lockbird doesn't really hurt uh, Rescue Ace that much at all unless they start with Bonfire or specifically Airlifter. But even then, Airlifter can't just... Uh, if you get Droll on Airlifter, you can just activate Emergency and Summon Turbulence and still set four cards. So I do think this is a lot higher impact um, against the Fire King deck because uh, you really need your Fire King Island to resolve. On top of that, after you use Snake Eyes Ash or after you use cards like Populous, uh, you know, Snake Eyes Ash and Populous, Populous, then if you get drolled it really sucks there because fire king island is pretty much your heart and soul of your deck it's pretty much the core and bulk of your combo and getting drolled on that kind of sucks so i do think in terms of what that can play through hand traps better i will have to give the cake to rescue ace rescue ace is a little bit stronger in that department with ash veil and imperm they're the same thing but we're talking about nibiru and joel knockbird Rescue Ace is the deck that can play through those hand traps a lot better. So I think Rescue Ace will get the point here in what uh, deck is better at playing through hand traps. So that's 1-0 for Rescue Ace. Now let's move on to the... All right, now we're on to the second topic. Now the second topic is going to be consistency. Now, Rescue Ace is no stranger to being a struggler to consistency. This deck is bricky as fuck. And now with the, the restriction of Airlifter, I think it's getting even worse, right? So even back then when I had three airlifter i still played three diabelle star to black witch because this deck bricks just like crazy and there's no real way to actually make this deck 40 cards without cutting your core engine pieces uh because you do have so many engine requirements on like the fire king deck right so in terms of this deck i do think this deck is a little bit more inconsistent um now i do know that you can max out on every consistency card such as you know three wanted poster three diabelle star but you cannot change the fact that there's one airlifter and that is a huge reason uh, for this deck uh, performance uh, that i think they'll they'll hinder the deck a lot right but if we look at the fire king deck here the fire king deck is completely untouched you can play everything at three you can play three snake eyes ash uh one poster is not limited you know all the fire king cards if you choose to play more you can play prosperity in this deck not only that but here's a little tech card that i've been seeing a lot of people have been playing is the snake eyes field spell which is divine temple of the snake eyes it's pretty much uh, a rota for your snake eyes ash if you really want more copies of that you can increase this deck consistency like crazy right and this deck in particular it almost never bricks because you have two sides of the coin in which engine you can draw you can draw either a lot of snake eyes cards or you can draw the fire king engine and the fire king stuff can still do things on your opponent's turn so no matter what you're doing you're always drawing a playable hand because both pieces of the engine while they work very well together can also work separately on their own too right now 
like I said earlier about rescue ace, rescue ace can't really do that, and the restriction to airlifter is nothing that you can control as a player because you can't really add more rescue ace airlifters. You just, you just can't. That's the rules. Uh, so I don't really see a way that this deck is getting more consistent. This deck is definitely on the heavy of the bricky end, and uh, the restriction doesn't help that at all. Fire King has no restrictions, and I do think that it, if we're going to talk about consistency, it just makes 100% sense um, that the Fire King deck is going to be way more consistent than the rescue ace deck. And, you know, being in a new deck without having any hits on the ban list is always going to make it shine in terms of consistency because konami just loves to hit consistency in cards right we see like kakash tira unicorn getting hit to two uh, and all that type of stuff right so consistency being hit to rescue is a huge blow to the deck and i'll have to give the point to fire kings here right fire king will take the cake in the uh, debate of which deck is more consistent as we can just compare and contrast and honestly see already the results of how many starters and extenders there are it, it's a dead giveaway that fire king is a lot better so let's go ahead and move on to our third all right, so topic number three here is about to be our power level of the decks, right? So which deck is actually more powerful? And let's compare their end boards, right? So this Rescue Ace end board is typically going to contain a copy of Promethean Princess in Graveyard, which is pretty much every end boards, uh, every Fire uh, decks end board nowadays with Ample Whale with set four cards, which is pretty much a lot of interactions, right? You have interactions with like Contain, Extinguish, Promethean Princess, potentially copies of like uh rescue ace cards such as like preventer on field and any of your extra non-engines that you draw typically the rescue ace end board is going to be about five to six interruptions uh on it on its own just just by its engine by itself right now the fire king deck for example if you guys never played against this deck i highly recommend you guys check out one of my previous videos it's called how to uh play fire kings and pretty much the engine of fire kings i showcase all the combos and all the hidden effects that this deck has because its end board looks very underwhelming on the surface level but once you start interacting with the board you'll realize that it's about seven or two to eight interruptions actually right so the standard end board from this deck is going to be promethean princess in the graveyard with ample whale on field on top of a flamberg dragon with an ip mascarena uh equipped to the flamberg dragon which can summon on your opponent's turn right and oh uh, most of the times with the Kirin in hand. And if you don't have access to Kirin, you can always send it with Garunix and then add it back with the Sunlight Wolf. So your interruptions are always Ample Whale, Kirin, IP Mascarena, Promethean Princess in Graveyard. Uh, now, on top of all that, you're going to have the Sanctuary to destroy all cards on the field. And at the same time, you're going to be having a bunch of floating cards too as well, right? Because after you make uh, Garunix Eternity Hang of the Fire Kings, the Promethean Princess can also destroy it, um, destroy this card and destroy an opponent card and you can get more value from the grunix eternity hang of fire kings uh, on top of that we also know that ample whale also has another effect um when it gets destroyed it can revive back a link too so what did i just list out there ample whale's effect kieran's effect uh ip mascarena hiang a uh, promethean princess uh sanctuary effect um you know like this is already six interruptions uh, oh yeah ample whales you know obviously it has a first effect to revive a card but it also has a second effect when it gets destroyed uh let's say for example with hiang hiang will destroy it and uh, this deck is pretty much ending on seven interruptions minimum right and that's all from one card all these uh all these interruptions can all come from literally a single one and seeker a single bonfire and a single snake eyes and on top of that that's just you know just engine right which is seven layers of interruptions it's actually way more oppressive impressive than the rest of these interruptions are the rest of these interruptions while they're very good it's not exactly as strong as the fire king stuff because the fire king stuff is actually spot removal right if you look at the rest of these interruption cards there are some spot removal cards but let's say take for example like an extinguish and extinguish um pretty much is like an imperm which is good sure but there's no like clear board nuke um and i do think if both decks get to full combo they most likely will win themselves but i don't think it's remotely possible or it's no realm possible for you to clear this fire king uh boards uh combo because it just has seven to eight layers of interruptions which outclasses the fire the rescue ace matchup uh for sure right um so in terms of rescue ace and in terms of fire king in the power levels of Fire King is just skyrocketed higher. You have not only more interruptions, but the interruptions in itself is more impactful than the rest of these interruptions, right? Having a torrential tribute on your opponent's turn is such a high impact, like, interruption that rest of has nothing really to compare to that type of power level and i do think it kind of makes sense because rest of you know they, they're good in their own separate ways right rest of has the fact that its hand traps are you know like nibiru and draw they play into a little bit better but you know they also have to sacrifice the fact that you know their engine 
isn't as strong as the Fire King engine. The Fire King engine is absolutely crazy. And if we look at uh, any board, just go ahead and look it up even on my channel. You look at this Fire King deck board and you're like, dude, this Fire King stuff is absolutely broken. And uh, yeah, I, I'm going around in circles now, but uh, I just wanted to uh, talk about just really dissect on the fact that the, the Fire King board is uh, absolutely stupid crazy, right? So that'll be it for uh, this segment. And we're going to move on to our last segment. And, you know, rest, uh, Fire King here is going to get the point. So that's 2-1 up for the Fire King. Let's go ahead and talk about our last point. Now, the last point I'm going to be talking about is room for non-engine, right? When I say room for non-engine, I'm talking about how many hand traps can each deck play. Now, it does not matter if you guys have been on my channel for a while now, you guys know that I am a big fan of decks that can play multiple non-engines because I don't think no matter how strong your deck is, if it can't play going second, what's the point, right? If we're comparing which deck is powerful, we might as well just play Exodia because that's the strongest deck ever printed or Dark World, right? And we're obviously not playing those decks because, you know... It, I'm going to give it to you guys straight. Dark Wars and Exodias aren't pretty much decks that can play a bunch of non-engine, right? So these are the decks that can play non-engine, and I do think this is a very key component. Now, Rescue Ace does struggle heavily, and I'm going to talk to you guys about this, and I want to stress this um, a lot, right? This deck heavily has a problem with fitting in 40 cards. It is damn near impossible to fit 40 cards into this deck, right? It's very, very hard because of all the engine requirements in this deck, so I do think the maximum amount of non-engine that you can play is probably 12, and if you look at any Rescue to his deck list online some lists aren't even getting to 12 they're getting to about 11 right they're pretty much playing three ash two valor three Emberm, and three nibiru and i'm reaching 45 46 cards i see people are reaching 44 to 43 cards and that just sounds completely incorrect to play but you have to play all those cards because you have too many engine requirements for this deck right now let's go ahead and look at the fire king deck right so the fire king deck we can actually trim this deck down a lot. Fire King is one of those decks that can play a shit ton of non-engine. I think this deck can play way more than the, than the rest of Ace deck can. It can play up to 15 because a lot of these cards are basically just all engine uh, cards in your deck that you just want them in your deck. They're not necessarily bricks like Sanctuary and Fire King Island aren't actually bricks, but they're cards that you pretty much are okay with in the deck because you're really focused on your engine. Um searching them out by using either Wanted Poster or Bonfire or Snake Eyes Ash, right? I treat these cards like Ponix, Arvada, and like Garunix. They're similar to like uh, Rakea and um, uh, what's that one Unchained? I'm going I'm, to I'm look it up. I'm, I'm bothered because I don't know its name. Uh, they're like Rakea, um, Sarama, and Shayama pretty much, right? These cards, you don't mind drawing them. You can still pop them. You can still use them. They're still effects um, in the hand, and they're still really good. But Garunix, Ponix, and Arvada are pretty much cards that you don't really care about to draw. And these are the main cards. Snake Eyes, Ash, Wanted Seeker, and the Bonfire are pretty much tutoring out your engine. So you can really slim the fat in this deck a lot, unlike Rescue Ace. You can't really cut like a Contain or Extinguish in Rescue Ace, because that's just wrong. And you're not cutting HQ in Rescue Ace, because that card is so good for your grind, right? But you can actually cut so many cards in this deck to trim a lot of the fat down. And I already have 15 non-engine, or 17 non-engine, actually. This is, you know, I forgot to put Bonfire in, but we can also, including Bonfire, we're playing about 43 cards, which is already less than, um... Uh, rescue ace and we have room for pretty much 15 on engine if we choose to not play talents we have room for three ash three droll three imperm three nibir three valor and this is going to outshine rescue ace in every shape uh or any um possible way right it's absolutely insane because this deck um like I said, it does not need uh, fat in the deck. It does not need its contain. It does not need its extinguish. And it's not an engine. Uh, it's off the roof, right? You can play 15. Um, you can even play more if you want to cut down on some of these cards like Prosperity or even, um, you know, less copies of Populous if you want to. You don't really need to Populous. And some builds don't even play Flamberg, but I do recommend you play Flamberg. Uh, but some builds don't even play Populous. So I do think this deck can play way more non-engine it can reach up to 17 if you really cut down the fat and rest of ace it's capped at about 12 and 11 or 12 right and that kind of sucks so i do think in the last form of um comparison here i do think i have to give it to fire king it can play way more non-engine not just even a little bit more non-engine fire king can play way more non-engine so that's pretty much it for all the points that i wanted to make about uh, this entire uh, video so i'm gonna go ahead and close off this video uh, very quick and obviously fire king is the leading 
All right, so that'll be it for this entire video. If you guys made it this far, don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe. And if you skipped this far into the video, Fire King does have Rescue Ace uh, B. I separated down into four different categories. I think Fire King outshines Rescue Ace in three different categories, and it beats them by a mile. The only thing Rescue Ace deck, the only thing that res the Rescue Ace deck does have over Fire King is the fact that it can beat Hand Traps a little bit better in terms of Nibiru and Joel and Lockbird. But in every other department, I do think Fire Kings is going to outshine uh, this deck in every. Uh, way um, possible right now i do think if we had three airlifter that would be a different story but you know shout outs to ban list we do have one airlifter and i do think that does hurt the deck a lot in the long run versus a deck like fire king which doesn't have any hits at all right so i hope you guys uh, found this video insightful and, and i hope that you i've helped you guys make an informed decision when you guys are deciding which deck to pick up let me know if i missed something let me know what your thoughts are on on both of these decks in the comments below maybe you guys think um Ursus is better right who knows and maybe it's something that i can learn for myself right so you know that'll be it for this one and i'll catch y'all in the next one